accept tyranny, when people sit back and are satisfied when they are being victims of bad government. So he would say today, rebel. And he would say, or rather I would say to you, in the same way that Daniel Shays' rebellion was suppressed, even though some changes were made in the tax code. And he was called a royalist. Oh, he's a, he's a sympathizer with the British. That's what they said in the press. Well, today, we have thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands of troops coming back from Iraq. You've got 2,000, I remember a lovely woman, um, Kelly Doherty, who was in my apartment once in New York during the Republican National Convention. She was 25 years old. She'd served in the National Guard from Colorado Springs, no radical place. She comes from the place where Focus on the Family, the right-wing Christian organization, has its headquarters. And she'd signed up for the war, and she'd served in Croatia, and then she was sent to Kuwait, and then in March of 2003, she was sent to Iraq. And she served for a year, and she got out in 2004, and she said, that stinks. That war stinks, it's wrong, I'm not going to fight it, I don't think other people should fight it. And as an Iraq war veteran, I'm going to fight against it. And she formed a little organization she was worried wouldn't, thri wouldn't survive called Iraq Veterans Against the War. Iraq Veterans Against the War now has members in 46 states. It has chapters in 23 states. They have the signatures of 2,000 active duty soldiers on a petition to bring troops back from Iraq. Their hotlines are receiving 3,000 calls a week from soldiers who don't want to uh, turn up for their deployment. And we've got 2,000 soldiers who have officially gone AWOL, I mean officially in that we know they're being looked for, probably thousands more that we don't know about, who are refusing to fight. Now those soldiers, they come home from Iraq, they're in debt, they're not given their benefits, maybe they can't pay their rent. My question to you is if they rebel, will you be with them? If they say enough of this, will you stand with them and fight in every way you know how? In Shay's day, they'd probably be called, they were called royalists. Today, they'd be called terrorists, probably, especially under the law that Hillary Clinton signed last week. But we need to think both of what we're up against and where our possibilities are. And I'm going to end on a, on a positive note, which is the story of one of the people in the book, Blue Grit. His name is James White, and he was for many years a hip-hop star. Well, he wasn't exactly a star, but he had a band, he recorded a few albums, he put out a few CDs. He was called Ghetto Priest in Milwaukee. And a few years back, in 1996, he was 23 years old, and he decided, I'm sorry, he was 33 years old, and he decided to run for office. And he said,